Hi, it's June 22nd, 2020. My name is Noah Seeley, and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be discussing a paper which was mentioned in our discussion on prioritized experience replay by the Google DeepMinds team, which acted as an upgrade to the DQN agent. The paper is called Deep Reinforcement Learning with Double Q Learning, and it's also by the Google DeepMinds research team. The agent that we'll see that was created with the Double Q algorithm aims to compensate for a few known issues with the DQN agent in order to outperform it. We're going to be covering this paper in two parts as usual, but before we get to that, if anything related to reinforcement learning still seems a little bit fuzzy, I invite you to go check out my two-part intro to reinforcement learning that I'll link in the description below. They're quick videos and cover the definitions, processes, and applications used in reinforcement learning. So without any further delay, today we'll be covering the introduction, background, and over-optimism due to estimation errors section of the paper. The introduction section starts off by discussing the bigger picture of reinforcement learning, the goal of creating an agent that samples from a good policy. They talk about how a popular reinforcement learning algorithm, Q-learning, tends to learn unrealistically high action values because it undergoes a maximization step on estimated action values. The paper says that this can lead to overestimation of the action value. They observe that sometimes this optimism is actually a good thing if it is occurring consistently and providing motivation for the agent to explore. However, if the overestimation is not uniform or concentrated toward exploring new states, they may prove to be very problematic. They comment on how although the recent DQN agent uses the Q-learning algorithm, it does have some methods of avoiding this overestimation problem, such as the environments not adding too much noise. But even with this optimal setup for Q-learning, they are still able to find overestimation occurring within the agent. So with this being said, the team was able to use an algorithm called double Q-learning in order to create a double DQN agent, which, spoilers, was able to outperform the DQN agent with higher game scores and more accurate value action functions. This paper delves into all of that and more, showing that by reducing this overestimation of action value functions observed in Q learning, higher scores can be achieved by a DQN like agent. So the background section can be broken down into three subsections, each reviewing a topic important to this type of learning Q learning, deep Q networks, and double Q learning. The Q learning subsection lays out the foundation of Q learning. They say that to solve a sequential decision problem as those presented to the agent in reinforcement learning, it can learn estimates for the optimal value of each action. The expected sum of future rewards is found by taking that action and following the optimal policy for all actions that follow. This estimation for each action in each state is taken by summing the rewards together in a policy. The rewards being multiplied by a discount rate that, as the paper quotes, trades off the importance of immediate and future rewards. Thus, the optimal value can be found by taking the max of these estimates for each given state action pair, and an optimal policy is derived by taking each of those optimal values at each state. This greedy algorithm is the basis of Q learning. It also mentions how most problems are actually too large to employ this learning of values for each possible action state pair, but instead it's more realistic to learn a parameterized value function, which will be learned through each iteration the agent goes through with the update method shown in the paper. The deep Q network subsection reviews the contents of the DQN paper. It says that the DQN agent uses a neural network to take the environment in some way as input and uses methods such as a target network and experience replay. The target network allows the neural network to have targets in which it can calculate an error from which it can learn from. This solved that original issue of translating a supervised learning technique to reinforcement learning, where targets are otherwise much more arbitrary and hard to determine. The experience replay implementation speeds up learning as updates sample a number of iterations of the agent stored in a memory bank. Both of these implementations improve the performance of the algorithm significantly. Finally, the double Q learning subsection discusses how Q learning and the DQN can lead to overestimation of value estimates. This occurs because the max argument is used to both select and evaluate an option. In the double DQN, it is only used once as they no longer use the max operator for evaluation. In double Q learning, there are actually two value functions learned, each experience randomly updating one of those two functions. For evaluation, one set of weights taken from the value function will determine the greedy policy and the other will determine the value. So the last section we'll cover today is called over-optimism due to estimation errors. This section starts off by once again mentioning the estimation of the values which leads to an 
over-optimistic value function. So it turns out that in previous papers, there's already been a lot of criticism and theories relating to this overestimation and actual proof that it can lead to suboptimal solutions. The paper shows that regardless of any of these theories, this overestimation can occur during any case of use of the Q-learning algorithm. They say that while more actions lead to more overestimations in Q-learning, double Q-learning will actually remain unbiased. And they actually show that by illustrating this overestimation with a concrete example, which can be visualized in these graphs in figure two shown in the paper here. So the left column of graphs compares true value function estimates to those estimated in Q learning. The middle column graphs the maximum of the estimated values in green. The figure shows that these estimated values are almost always greater than their true value correspondence. The right column graphs the bias of these functions. The important takeaway here is the blue line, representing the double DQN estimates. It indicates that their biases are almost always at zero. Overall, these graphs show that the overestimation can occur even while using true values. The value estimates can become even more off when an action is taken off of an already over-optimistic value function. They state that even if an overestimation is uniform across iterations, its error can still vary across states. Ultimately, this estimation will allow the agent to learn the wrong information of which states are relatively valuable, thus affecting its overall learning of policies. The section ends by noting that the previously mentioned optimism, which can lead to motivation to explore, actually refers to another kind of overestimation. That type of optimism was only overestimation that would occur after updates, resulting in an actual optimism in the face of certainty. This was also observed to lead to inhibiting the findings of an optimal policy as it diverted the agent from uncertain situations. So yeah, that concludes my part one of the discussion on the deep reinforcement learning with double Q learning paper by the Google DeepMinds team. I should have part two ready tomorrow, where we will cover the double DQN results and discussion sections. There were also some more technical bits in today's section that I did not delve as much into. So as always, I've linked all resources that I've used in the description below for you guys to go check out yourselves. If you feel that I've missed anything or got anything wrong, please let me know in the comment section below. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.